You know on the bus. You're not supposed to turn it from a bus round. It's against the law. Oh. People do it. You're not supposed to. Oh. Yeah. I ain't gonna stay on you. Yeah. You listen. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Time for me to kick some butt in driving. You see, I don't want no smoke. He don't want none of this smoke I'm about to give him. Bigger man, aim at the target. Aim at the target. Yeah, aim at the target. Help him out. Aim, think aim. Don't let him get you. Okay, y'all both back in. There you go, there you go, think aim, aim. Get him, think, get him. Get him, think, get him. There you go, get him, get him. Don't let him kill you. He helping you out, think. Jurassic Park. Stick a man found a dinosaur game. Go ahead, stay scanning so you can start. Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay. That's right, Stink. And what has started? The Goolympiad. The, the Goolympiad? Yeah. All right. Yeah. And what characters do we have here that are facing off? So it's Tyrannodon, Zerd, B Batman, Triceratops, and Bebop. Okay. And who are the first opponents? Let the fight commence. No, begin. <laughs> hey, you, Batman, go, go punch Gigantosaurus in the face. Got it. Crunch attack. What you say? I ain't hear you. You said it's beautiful? <laughs> I know, right? I didn't even know this was up here. And how was Wonka? Did you like it? Huh? Let me see. Let me see your face. I can't hear you. <laughs> did you like it or no? Yes. You did? Okay, I'm glad you liked it. I never knew this was up here. Stink a man. I don't think he's scared of heights. Get your chin off of that. Stink. Come on, man. You are? Why? I don't see what's going on. Lost cause. Huh? My boy Don in the building. Oh no, we got cash over clout. No, come on, man. I don't know what's going on. We got lost cause over here. Come on, man. I don't see what's going on, man. Check out my people, man. Then we got my boy Green. He got 1871 kicks. Okay. You know what I'm saying? All right. That's a bit. What's going on, big dog? Yeah. Come on. Come check it out. Come For sure. Check it out. Got to collab with Venom. You feel me? Oh, 1871. Yeah. These are. Collab with Venom and shit. You know what I'm saying? These are the one on one joints. You know what I'm saying? Glow in the dark soul. Yeah. Little mink on the, you know, splash out. Okay. Got the little red patches. You know what I'm saying? Got, got, got my boy Slithery over here. All cutting some denims. These is hard. I see, I see how y'all coming, man. Come on, man. I better come get this. I'm rocking with these. I like I like the heroism. I like that. You got the little snake skin flare. So I'm playing with that. Yeah, I'm playing. Check it out. Yeah, I see how you coming, man. Yes, Them hard. I like that. For sure. Come on, man. Come on, man. They better act like they know, man. Act like y'all know what's going on, man. Cash over the clout, man. How much did you make today? Y'all better come see my boy, man. Come on, man. Stop playing with him. I'm coming for one of these rugs too, my boy. As soon as I move. As soon as, literally, as soon as I move. Come on, man. Come see my boy at the radio, man. Y'all know what's going on. What folks at? I don't know. That's the only one, only one I didn't see. Then you got my boy, you know, he do, he do wedding for this one over He got the hats, the styles, you know what I'm saying? He going crazy with the And I seen this. Going, I'm yeah. trying to remember the, what did I see this first at? Did, was it in here or it, it could have been in you, here you, all the time? Probably this is rack. This okay. is a mixture of all of us, me, Iridium, he on there. Um, you know, he got 
My old Frank Gator joint. For sure. You know what I'm saying? Oh, he got the look. This, this joint crazy right here. This little bag he got. Where did I see this egg, gang? I'm trying to really remember. It, it, you know this is so nice. Look at my snake and white me too. At the radish and blue. Look at mama snake. It's nice up in here too. Little black rocks. Little view. Nope, I didn't. Thank you. You are. Busting in here. Look at this thing. Who made the gingerbread? It's raw, too. Who made, it? who made the gingerbread? It's raw. You got this. Uh -huh. You got this. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Come on, baby. You got to <laughs> 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 You got this. I'm falling and I can't get up. <laughs> you got this. This ain't right. It ain't right. It ain't. It ain't right. You know what I'm gonna do? My shit. Give me your flowers. That ain't right. That ain't right. I'm gonna stick on a few things. I know my stick man was gonna like. Shout out to Mama Snake, though, for this. And this is arguably one of the nicest gifts. <laughs> ain't no arguably. Stick a man loves candy. So he'll love building this just to devour it. One right here, don't play. Don't play with him. Don't play with him. And then the other one, I just really wanted to show y'all. Four me to the twin. So y'all know how gigantic sore is coming. So we got Momenkasaur. How did this happen? Jesus. 
Oh. Oh my God. Now what do we have here? Gigantosaurus versus... What do you mean? Oh, right. Gigantosaurus versus who? Mamekasaurus. He's huge, guys. And we thought he was big. Been a minute, guys, but we gonna be back real soon, man. Top of the year, man. What better way to get it started than the now? Let's get it going. So what? Yes. Gave the spider a bath? Yeah, that would be great. Okay, okay, let's start over again. The sun? The sun? Who's sun? Out came the what? No sun. And what happened after that? Then. episode of cooking something for your sear found some rigatoni noodles found some shrimp still got some of this left over from the pizza that i made the other night and got some garlic knots that's to keep the garlic knots on deck and if y'all follow the directions, you're supposed to keep them in the bag. And they cook really good if you keep them in this bag. Everything mixed in real nice, as y'all can see. We can all add some Italian seasoning. Just for like some more greenery, I guess. And voila. <laughs> That's coming, Steve. <laughs> Good. And then you know my fat ass. I'm like, okay, I got to do better with my life. I got to stop. But I told my, she's like, you said you want to do a meat? I said, Hey guys this is a spot called burger bite y'all know i get around 
I've never seen a stamp on a bun. They just did that. And I got the chicken sandwich. So, see how they come. It's zero degrees outside, y'all. Zero. Zero degrees. Oh no, he, he said I gotta get the What is it? It's an obstacle course. An obstacle course? Mm -hmm. It's a zoo and an obstacle course. Okay. I just got my boy, uh, whatever this is, construction dig and play. And got him a new book. What, is it, what does it say, Stink? I love you, Daddy. What's that, Steve? Whoa! It's the biggest elephant I ever seen. I know. I see the birthday boy whipping, 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 whipping. I see you. I see you, my boy. <laughs> He whipping too. Stop playing with him, man. <laughs> they in here coming real strong. It's real movie in here. They literally have everything. Oh, stop. I don't see what's going on up in here, man. It's for the kids. Hold on, you know what this is? This is a Dave and Buster's for kids. That's exactly what this is. Real movie Zuby. No, well, excuse me. Any place that you follow me, no, don't follow me. I don't know who you think you talking to, y'all. That man do not play. That's my boy. 
he finna get up out of here, but he was show right. He told me, I want to go over there with the big kids. I want to go to see what the big kids doing. They literally have everything in here for children. Everything. Be careful, Stink. Be careful. Go ahead. Go ahead. Climb it up. You got it. Go ahead. You got it. All you got to do is hang on. Yeah, this place too busting. This place way better than Dave and Buster. Oh, man. All right, my good people. We are back with another episode of My Truth. You know, presented to you by yours truly, Sir Neil. First and foremost, y'all know we have to start off by giving all praises to the Most High God. For without him, nothing at all would be possible in this world. Episode five of my truth. So I've been debating, going back and forth on where to, well, first let me start off by saying Happy New Year to everybody. I know y'all haven't seen my face, you know, since last year or whatever the case is. And um, main reason being... You know, I've just been trying to lock all the way in, you know, stay focused as far as generating this revenue is concerned. You know, I have a, a four year old on my hands these days, so I have a four year old as well as, you know, me being 30 years of age now. So perspectives have changed, you know, my mindset, my focus has truly changed and the uh, I said all that to say um, I've just been, you know, trying to stay focused on what's truly important right now. And that is, in fact, making sure that I am becoming more and more financially stable. It is, like I was saying, of extreme importance that I make sure that I'm financially stable for my four-year-old that I have on my hands. And uh, not just for him, obviously, it's for myself as well. It's for my family, you know. I, uh, I think it's really important to create a foundation in your life that um, the other individuals in your family, the young people growing up, could look at and say to themselves, you know, I could see myself doing the exact same thing one day. You know, not to uh, venture off from what the title of the topic will be about, but I recently went to my oldest sister's house. And, you know, if I replay my young life mixed in with my adult life, my sister has done nothing but be an example of what, you know, to what to be, what, you know, what goals that you may want for yourself. You know, I've, I've literally watched this woman you know, go from a tiny, small, one or two bedroom apartment into now what is, what obviously most would consider, <laughs> what obviously most would consider to be a mansion. And, you know, it brought tears to my eyes. I was lost for words like I pretty much am now, but that's the goal in life. And if you create the right foundation, if you give the right blueprint, you'll create other success stories and that's that's the way that you truly create generational wealth so that brings me to um the title I hate using those idioms brings me to the topic at hand which is in fact creating a foundation creating the blueprint for your life like i said so that way others may follow I'll give you a brief backstory about my own life, at least uh, as much as I possibly can remember. If I think back, you know, as early on as possible, I can kind of remember being in second grade. So you guys can help me out with, you know, exactly how old you would be in second grade or whatever the case is. But those are, if I'm not mistaken, those would be my earliest thoughts to date. And so as early as I can remember, 
Uh, I've always been extremely intelligent and I've always been deemed as most likely to succeed. Reason being, I'm not going to just say black people because I'm pretty sure most people would equate intellect, genius as as literally, you know, I guess being uh, those with, what exactly am I trying to say? When someone is to look at someone who appears to be, you know, of high intellect, who appears to be extremely intelligent, more often than not, we'll say that individual is more likely to succeed in the world to succeed in that person's own life, then maybe the next individual who you may not think is as smart as that person is. Now you fast forward time and I had to realize that being smart, having high intellect does not necessarily equate to diligent work. And I want you all to follow me as far as that's concerned, just because you may have all the tools in the shed. It does not mean that you're willing to do the necessary work in order to get the job done. And I don't want that to go over anyone's head, you know, and that's not to say that I have not worked extremely hard in my young life because I have, you know, initially when I graduated high school, I went to Kentucky State and I basically flunked out at Kentucky State. Kentucky State, uh, was definitely a necessary experience, but I had so much freedom and I was so far away from Chicago, I guess that, you know, I, I decided to uh, take a step on, on my wild side or whatever the case is. I kind of equate uh, going to Kentucky State as when I initially jumped off the porch in my life, you know, and, you know, most people say jumping off the porch has to do with, uh, violence, street life, whatever the case is. So I've always told myself I didn't jump off the porch until I went away to college at, you know, I was 17 years of age. And so at that point in time, I really was only concerned with not doing what I was supposed to be doing. <laughs> I was only concerned with doing the exact opposite of what I have come to school to do which is get a degree. You know, I'm, I'm under the assumption that I've, you know, fallen in Frankfort, Kentucky, and I'm just supposed to uh, kick it. You know, it's, it's, it's playtime. It's kick it time. It's, it's, uh, it's time to just be as carefree as possible in life. I'm tell you, what, what did Drake say? YOLO. You know, I was definitely under the YOLO act and, and, uh, I'm not going to say I've always beat myself up for it, but I do recognize and I understand that I was supposed to be going there to further my education and to essentially, you know, receive a degree that would essentially allow me to make a decent amount of money and, you know, start my life, start my success story for my life, if that all makes sense. But you fast forward time, I ended up flunking out of Kentucky State and I came back to Chicago, attended Kennedy King to get my associate's degree. Now, when I say I flunked out of Kentucky State, I literally mean just that. I got all F's for three semesters straight. I then come to the city of Chicago and attend community college. And I'm on the Dean's list the entire time up until receiving my associate's degree. So I, I obviously said all that to say, you know, I did go from being what people deem as most likely to succeed to now. I'm, uh, I'm an entrepreneur. You know what I'm saying? I'm still figuring out what my next steps will be. I'm still figuring it out. I'm still figuring out what all I would like out of life for myself. Although, you know, I, I got a pretty good idea for the most part. And like I said, I'm still... I'm still getting a grasp of what it means to create a real savings for yourself and create that real generational wealth and that 
financial stability that is completely necessary if you have children, you know. And along with me having a son, I have nieces and nephews, you know what I'm saying? I have young individuals in my family who I'm close to who are looking up to me, looking towards me, you know, looking towards the older individuals in their family, period. And that's the reason why I said it's of extreme importance to create that foundation for yourself, for your children, if you have them. And mainly, well, I don't want to say mainly, but the bottom line is you're doing this so that way your family could one day be a true success story. You're doing this so that way the generations to come will have a real foundation, you know, to be a part of, a real foundation to emulate. And like I said, it's it's just it's extremely important. Uh, most of most of the young black individuals who I know personally, we didn't really have a, a real guide. You know what I'm saying? I, I could sit up here and tell a lie and not say I didn't have certain individuals and certain programs that preached the, you know, different things to me because I did. You know, shout out to uh, me being a part of Upward Bound, which was a, a program to attend on the weekends that prepped you for college, prepped you for post-secondary education, but also prepped you for what's to come, you know, for your life after school has ended. And so, you know, it's, don't get me wrong, I do understand that although I am 30 years of age now, I I am relatively young. You know what I'm saying? I uh, I hear this from older individuals pretty often. You're You're an extremely young man. And although I do know that, you know, in the grander scheme of things, that is the absolute truth. I feel extremely old these days, you know. And a part of me aging now is me pointing in on what it means to be wise, you know, what it means to have wisdom. And, you know, I'm. I'm a work in progress, let me say it like that, but I do recognize that I'm a lot wiser than my counterparts. You know, I've recognized that. I do recognize that I'm more likely to tell the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth, so help me God. Uh, you know, I'm much more likely to do that than the next person. And so with that being said, I have to continue to give you all my truth because it is just that, the truth. We've we've gone away from that. When I say we, I mean, you know, the world in its entirety. We've taken a step back from what we know to be true. And so I'm pretty much going to leave you all with that. Like I said, I'm excited, you know, for this year. I'm excited for the rest, the remaining uh, months in uh, the year 2024. You know, we're already mid-February, so I'm technically I'm late with giving you guys episode five. I'm aware that I am late and I'm going to do my due diligence to, you know, to get it going at a much higher rate. It's funny, right? I think that I can't present and give off my message without you know me getting my hair redone me coming on here and being completely dripped out you know what i'm saying just ridiculous thoughts that i have that are pre preventing me from continuously giving the message to the masses and so i'm 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 endeavoring to get out of my own way you know what I'm saying? Because I know that this is necessary. It's not only necessary for me to give it off, you know, for you guys, but it's it's necessary for myself. I actually look at this as therapy. You know, this is me talking right now to a camera, you know, to a phone, to a light, 
You know, me talking to no one specifically is essentially therapeutic for me. You know, obviously it's nothing like me having the same similar conversation with an actual therapist, but I said that to say, you all need to find some form of therapy. You know, find something that is truly therapeutic and stick to it and master it, you know, if you can, because it is of extreme importance. All right, y'all. I will bid you adieu. Till next time. Not I had to actually ask my four year old how to get him to martial arts. <laughs> Pick you up. Okay. <laughs> he told me not to leave him. <laughs> I don't see my boy, man. Oh no. I don't care who y'all is. I don't care what y'all know. Don't play with my sticker, man. Oh no, we ain't coming like that. Man. No, nah, though, he ain't here to learn discipline. To learn him some structure. Oh no. Bring y'all kids here though. Cause I like how they coming already. And they ain't even been all the way up in there. Play with my shorty though. I don't wanna have to, you know? You know?